This week on People Passion Power, we talk with former Washington Wizards center Marcin Gortat. We spend a lot of time talking about life after the NBA. It's just people, passion, power. All right, welcome to People, Passion, Power. My guest today is a good buddy of mine, the former center for the Washington Wizards, Mr. Marcin Gortat. What's up, my brother? How you hanging? Good. How are you? How is Washington treating you since I left? Well, listen, it's not uh, not 80 and sunny like it is in Florida where you're sitting right now, but uh, we're, 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 we're doing it, man, just uh, surviving. So on the show, March, I, I know you've uh, checked us out a little bit. We like to talk about people really focus on people who pursue their passions. And what I want to talk to you a little bit about today is what point in time did you decide it, that you wanted to play professional basketball in your life? Well, I started really late, to be honest with you. Uh, originally, I was a soccer goalie. Uh, I started practicing in, uh, in a Polish team uh, when I was uh, 10 years old. And I've been working out and practicing playing games for about seven, close to eight years. And when I was almost 18, uh, out of nowhere, uh, I decided that I want to go and play basketball. Um, one of my coaches uh, from my uh, school, from my high school, uh, he was a coach also in uh, in, uh, in a professional team, uh, basketball professional team, and uh, he told me that if you come to uh, one of the practices, you know, I'm also going to help you out in school. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't the best student always, and. Uh, you know, I, I had some issues with uh, different, you know, uh, subjects and, and topics. But, you know, he, I said there's nothing wrong with me trying to go and, 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 and trying to see what's basketball about. Uh, and that's what I did. That's what I did. I went to basketball team, uh, basketball practice. And since that day, obviously, I fell in love with basketball. I started pursuing basketball for another 16, 17 years uh, at and recently, at age 36, I decided to retire uh, from uh, playing professional basketball from NBA. Uh, you know, it was an incredible journey for 17 years. And, and, you know, I could write probably about three books, not one, but three books about, you know, basketball sacrifices, passion and dedication and, uh, you know, the, the, the patience and everything that, you know, needs to go with, uh, with basketball if you want to play at the highest level. Let, let's talk about that for a second. Did you ever have any doubt that you would play in the NBA? You know, I, I didn't really think about even playing in NBA. Obviously, it was a dream. It was uh, something that I was looking at. But, you know, I, I wasn't really, like, convinced, like, hey, you know, I'm going to go to the NBA. I, it, for me, being 18 years old kid who just started playing basketball, I had so many things that I had to pick it up so fast. And I had to make it up for you know, a couple of years back because, you know, a lot of kids were practicing since they were 10 years old. I started playing basketball when I was 17. Obviously, I had some I had some uh, uh, preparation from, you know, from soccer. I was obviously athletic. I had a great hands because I was a goalie. So I was able to catch the ball pretty, pretty easy. And, you know, I was always a hardworking player. So, you know, for me, uh, in order for me to play at a good level, I just had to work, work every day. And, you know, eventually, you know, people start telling me like, hey, I think you might be good enough to go to the NBA. But, you know, every time when people were telling me this, I didn't really realize what it means to go to the NBA. What is NBA? You know, I wasn't really like uh, uh, I didn't really have that knowledge back then. And, you know, from the moment that I start getting better and better at basketball, I start playing at a higher level. Eventually I signed my first contract, you know, and then I start finding out more about the NBA. I was like, wow, somebody compared me with NBA player or told me that I, you know, eventually one day I can be an NBA player. That's huge. But again, it was, it was something that, you know, it was in the back of my head, but it wasn't something that I was like obsessed. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just obsessed with getting better, working better, you know, working hard every day, trying to improve my game, working on my weaknesses, not my strengths. And, you know, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, you know, I went to this uh, Treviso big man camp in Italy. Uh, I won the dunking contest and I had probably about, you know, 10 to 12 scouts who came over, gave me the business cards 
you know, that, hey, uh, you know, I'm from Atlanta, I'm from Detroit, I'm from Miami and, you know, LA Clippers and, you know, this and this team. And, you know, I had those business cards and I was almost like praying to those business cards, you know, every day because it was huge for me back then, you know, as a young player, it was huge. So, you know, it was a definitely a huge motivation, you know, a, 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 like a breaking point for me where I understood like, hey, I, I can really make it to the NBA. And, uh, and that, that's what happened. Two years later, I uh, put my name into a draft and I made it. That's awesome. Now, when you look back on your career, which was a very, very long career, what's it like to be 36 and I don't want to say retired, it's the wrong word, but what's your mind like now? How's it coming out of the league? Is it hard? It, it is hard. It is hard because your life completely changes, you know, your life completely uh, changes. And, 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 you know, the first three months, I say it was the, the toughest one, one, because uh, one of the reasons is because I didn't expect I'm going to be waived. That's one, you know, uh, having that thought in your mind that, hey, your contract is about to expire in May or June. And after that, you know, you're going to be a free agent, but also you have an option that you can just retire from, you know, professional basketball. It's a different story. But then next thing you know, you're getting that phone call uh, February 7th, where you're getting phone call from a coach says, ah, you know, unfortunately, you know, we have to waive you. You know, we just made a trade and then, you know, and the reality really hits you, you know. So the first three months, after I was waived, they were not easy. They were not easy. Also, you know, I, I had a lot of offers uh, offers from uh, different teams, but, uh, you know, eventually I didn't go uh, for, for a couple of different reasons. Um, and, you know, you got to you got to adapt. You got to adapt to a new life. You know, first of all, you got to wake up every day and you got to understand that your phone is not calling. You're not getting text message when when you have a practice, what time you got a game, what time you got to catch the bus or you got to catch the plane. You don't getting those messages, you know. I, I've been telling myself, you know, when I'm retired, I'm gonna be sleeping till noon if I if I if I can. No, it ain't gonna happen like that, you know. You've been waking up for 17 years, you know, at six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. That's how you're gonna wake up for the rest of your life, probably. And that's that's what's happening. I'm waking up seven o'clock in the morning, and I'm telling to myself, like, go sleep. Why are you waking up? Like, go sleep, you know. You wake up and you go to a you you go to a, you know weight room and then you're lifting those weights and you're asking yourself like why do I lift why would I do that you know I don't play basketball no. you start questioning yourself with a lot of different things and and basically you just sit at 10 11 o'clock in the morning you sit on your couch or you know you sit at the pool and you're saying to yourself something is wrong that's not my life that's not a, that's not 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 how I was living for the past 17 years and. And all of a sudden, you just got to adjust. You got to adjust. You got to find a way to occupy your brain. You got to find a way to occupy your, you know, your time during a day. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't have a family yet. I'm working on it, obviously. But, you know, it's 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 something new for me. And uh, like I said, the first three, four months were very tough, very tough. Uh, you know, you can be this super tough guy you know under the basket you can be tough mentally you have you can have a strong character but on certain things in life you can't prepare yourself even if you think you are prepared you know life hits you when life hits you hard things are you know things are not always easy and uh, that's that's what happened with me uh you know i thank god i had a lot of people around me i have a lot of um, uh, opportunities, business opportunities, and also I have a, a wonderful foundation, you know, big foundation back in Poland. So that foundation is occupying a lot of you know, my private time. So, you know, I found my balance. I would say year after I was waived, I found my balance in life, and now I know what to do. When you were um, when you received the contract with the with the Wizards. And it was a it was a large contract at the time. It was a five year deal, if I remember correctly. Right. It was a it was a lot of money. And and I have questions for for folks that athletes that that make a large sum of money, and that hits you. And and you were happy. I remember. I think you said that was the happiest day of your life. Of now course, that you're, right. it, it, do you still do you still think that way? Of course, because from from professional professional standpoint, you know that that's that was definitely a a, a very very. Uh, uh, it maybe not important, but very memorable moment in my life because not because you get 60 millions and you know, hey, you're the richest guy on earth. Now you can do whatever you want. No, it's not about that. It's just that you have reached a certain point in your life and, you know, 
that contract shows that you know people admire you people seen your hard work for the past you know whatever 10 years and it shows that you know you've been working hard and basically that was my reward for another five years and i was excited that you know i achieved so much you know i mean I mean, geez, for, you know, for at the end of the day, I was 57th pick in the NBA, you know, 57th pick out of 60 that is being drafted. 57th pick in the NBA. There are only two players in the history of NBA that survived with a 57th pick that long. It's only me and Manu Ginobili from San Antonio Spurs. Manu got, you know, three champion, three or four championships, and he got probably about 200 millions on his bank account. But I'm the next guy who got, you know, uh, 12 years, uh, uh, you know, 12 years on my neck as an NBA veteran. And I was drafted from the 57th pick from Poland, you know, the only player in the history of our country that survived that long. So, you know, I, I would say this is a pretty good damn accomplishment for me. And, you know, a lot of people are telling me like, hey, you uh, you know, you suck, you bad, you can't play, you dumb, you this, this and that. And next thing you know, I'm 12 year veteran with, you know, pretty good life. So, you know, I would take this as a huge accomplishment. And definitely that day was something big for me. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously put me in a position to be uh, even better for the future because now I can get my foundation even stronger. Uh, I can build my farm, you know, I can build my community better not only in Washington, not only in Poland, but also in the entire, you know, uh, United States of America. So, you know, that gave me a lot of uh, opportunities, you know, that contract. I got to tell a story about you, March. And and one of the things that we focus on the show is that we try and convey the message to, to the people that are watching that people are just people, regardless if they're NBA athletes or, or presidential candidates or musicians. And, and you really have that mentality. March would take uh, my daughter and I, we, we'd sit at the basketball games and, and my son and my wife and, and my whole family, really. And, and you would always during the game, make sure you'd look up and give us a little wave. And we'll never forget that. And then even during the playoffs, we'd be down hanging in the locker room. So um, I've had the great experience of getting to know March. And, and uh, that's one of my favorite things about you, man. Even even in the height of your career, you're just uh, you're just an average dude. You got a big bank account, but you're just an average guy like everybody else, right? Right. Well, I think the most important thing is, and you know, obviously, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I I never grew to a position to be, uh, of of a like super, like a super mega superstar, whatever. You know, being a god, like you know, some of these guys, like LeBron or you know James Harden or Russell Westbrook or you know couple lot of guys in the league. I never been that guy, you know, I never been that guy. And, you know, I mean, obviously who knows how I will act when I will reach that point. But, you know, I always believe that, you know, that the best thing and the, and the best thing that one person can give to another is his time and honesty and, and, and just and acknowledge and, and I'll acknowledge him, you know, as a, as a human, you know, so, Obviously, I could probably, I could probably just, you know, see you at the game and wave it to you and say, hey, it was cool to see you. Goodbye. But at the same time, I was like, hey, I can make your life even better or I can, you know, give a great experience to you or your family and I can take you to the locker room or show you practice court or stuff like that. So, you know, my five or 10 minutes from my time is not going to cost me a lot, but it might give a great experience to you or your family. So that's how I learned, you know, not only you know, as a, as a, as a person that got a foundation, but also as a human, you know, as a basketball player. And I, I'm going to be honest, NBA also taught me that, you know, uh, this is something that, you know, we learn as NBA players to give back to the community. And I think it's huge. So, you know, I, I hope more athletes will do stuff like that because, after, you know, life will be much, much, much easier. <laughs> yeah, it matters. So tell me about the foundation, um, what, what you're working on, what, what it's for. D d enlighten me. Well, first of all, we, we do most of the stuff we do in Poland, but uh, just recently, about you know, three, four months ago, we opened up um, a sister foundation to my original foundation that is in Poland. In Poland, we have opened uh, a sister foundation here in the United States. The, the name of the foundation is Our Poland uh, Foundation, and this is uh, pretty much for 
creating opportunities for our athletes that's going to come from Poland to United States, uh, creating scholarship, creating opportunities for promoting our culture, uh, you know, Polish culture, our Polish uh, athletes, uh, our Polish stars, movie stars, and creating uh, opportunities for uh, Polish community, basically. Uh, the, the foundation in Poland is doing a little bit more. Uh, we have our annual basketball camps, uh, and they, I'm, I gotta admit they are pretty big. Uh, we have also a celebrity game between uh, my celebrities, athletes, uh, actors, actresses, artists, uh, TV personalities uh, against Polish army. Uh, this is something we've been doing also for about six, seven years now, uh, maybe even eight now, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we're going to continue to do it. And then we also have four uh, basketball schools, not only basketball, let's call this sports schools. Uh, I have over a thousand students under my name. Uh, and it, it kind of sounds funny when people are excited about LeBron James having a school and paying for the school. Uh, well, I've been having five schools for the past seven years and nobody mentioned that, but it's okay. Uh, it's okay. right now, March. We got I'm it. mentioning this right now. But again, uh, like I said, it's it's very difficult for me to to give you a, a quick answer for my uh, for, for the for the you know for my foundation. I mean, we do so many different things for the past 12 years. I opened up foundation when I made it to the end. The, the day the first day I made it to the NBA, I opened up foundation. So, you know, in past 12 years we did so much it will be we'll need a little bit more than a couple of minutes now. One one of the other cool things is you when you were with the Wizards, you used to have Polish heritage night. So you, right. you you'd fly right. in plane fulls of people to come and hang for a night. And that was pretty cool. Right. That's that's what we do. And, uh, you know, I got to tell you, Washington was just amazing. Washington and definitely uh, Los Angeles Clippers were amazing organizations to contribute to the Polish Heritage Night. Uh, Washington, even right now, I mean, I'm seriously had tears in my eyes. I'm hoping somebody from Washington's, you know, Wizards is going to see this because I recently went to, the, to Washington to see a basketball game with my uh, winners, my uh, basketball camp winners from Poland, they flew into Washington to obviously learn about, uh, to learn a little bit about Polish, uh, uh, I'm sorry, American culture. They, they, they've they seen museums, they've seen White House, they've seen uh, uh, Lincoln Memorial, Then when, and then after that they went to NBA game. And just one phone call to uh, Washington Wizards staff and they welcomed me with open arms and it was just seriously very very emotional moment for me i had i had a tears in my eyes because this was the first time i really missed basketball that was the really first time i missed yeah. basketball of being in of being in the locker room between these guys you know getting ready for war for basketball game and you know it, it, it really my heart was even bigger when i walked into the locker room and i realized bradley beal uh, switch his locker room to my locker rooms. It, it was just like mind, mind blowing away. Now I now we know why he's putting up 50 points a game because he got that Polish hammer power from that locker room. Trust me. <laughs> Naturally, that that's exactly what it is. I, I'm sure when he watches this, it, he'll say the exact same thing that uh, it's it's the luck of uh, Marcin Gortat that it's uh, putting oh, up the points now. Right. So, well, listen, man, I greatly appreciate you coming on the show. You're, you're a friend. Um, and, and your knowledge is awesome. We wish you all the best, and um, I hope to see you soon. Go jump on the jet ski. I know it's uh, a nice right, day. I get a little do. bit of That's fresh air. We got we to occupy that time right now. <laughs> all right. Thanks for coming on the show. People, passion, power, former wizard, Marching Gortat. You're the man, March, the Polish Hammer. Thank Thanks you. for coming Appreciate on. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thanks.